Welcome to Electron Online and our next topic dealing with sound and sound waves is the Doppler shift. So what happens when a source of sound moves relative to the observer or what happens when the observer moves relative to the sound or what happens when they both move relative to each other in different directions? Same direction, opposite directions. Hmm, something changes. The frequency observed by the observer will change depending upon what is going on here. So let's say that here's the frequency of the source starting at 500 Hertz. And let's say that the velocity of sound is equal to 340 meters per second. So at the moment, they're both stationary. So sound is being produced and sound waves emanate away from the source at a speed of 340 meters per second and eventually reach the observer. Notice that the waves will be a distance apart equal to the wavelength and in the case that the frequency is 500 Hertz and the velocity of sound is 340 meters per second we can say that velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength or the wavelength is equal to velocity divided by the frequency the velocity being 340 meters per second and the frequency being 500 Hertz which is 500 cycles per second and notice uh, that would be 340 divided by 500 equals 68 centimeters or 0 0.68 meters. All right, so that would be the wavelength, and that's what you want to see here. This is 0 0.68 meters. But now what happens if the source is moving towards the observer at some velocity v sub s, v of the source? Let's say that it's 10 meters per second. What happens now? Each time sound is produced and a wave leaves the source, it moves out at the speed of sound at 340 meters per second. But when the next wave is put out, the source has moved a certain distance during that time, and so the next wave will then be put out with the source being a little bit closer to the observer. And what you'll see then is that the sound waves will now be closer together and the wavelength is actually now reduced in size. So with a shorter wavelength like that, what the effect then really is, is that the frequency actually then goes up. Because notice here, if we go back to this equation, and we solve this equation for the frequency, the frequency is equal to the velocity divided by the wavelength. And if the wavelength becomes smaller, that means the frequency increases, and therefore the observer will hear sound at a higher frequency. It's something we've all experienced before. Imagine that you're standing next to the highway, you look in one direction, and the car is coming, and the car drives past you in the other direction. What does that sound like? Well, it sounds kind of like this. The car is coming towards you. And as it moves past you, the frequency changes, because when it's coming towards you, the wavelengths shorten and the frequency goes up, so you hear a higher frequency sound, and as it's, the car is driving away from you, the opposite happens. Then, if the... If the, if the uh, source of the sound is moving away, it causes the wavelengths to be farther apart. Farther apart means greater wavelengths, means smaller frequency, and the frequency here goes down. So you hear higher frequency, mm, and lower frequency, mm, as the car drives by. Now, the question is, how does that frequency change? How do we calculate that? The equation we use for that is fairly straightforward. It is the, the frequency observed is equal to the frequency of the source times the following equation. The velocity of sound plus or minus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity of sound plus or minus the velocity of the source. And the whole question always is, what is the plus or minus for this and the plus or minus for that? Now I know that some books they put out an equation for each particular case. I think it's just a lot easier to put it all into one equation and just determine the plus or minus. So in this particular case, what would it be for us? We know that the source is moving towards the observer at 10 meters per second. The observer is not moving at all. All right, that means the velocity of the observer is zero, so that it goes away and we don't have to worry about this at all. All right, now. The velocity of the source is 10 meters per second, so this whole thing would become, this is equal to the frequency of the source, which is 500 hertz, times the velocity of sound is 340 meters per second, 
340 meters per second. We don't put plus or minus here because we know that's zero, and the velocity of source is 10. Now the question is, is this going to be a plus or is this going to be minus? Well, the sign you put there will depend upon whether or not the frequency you're going to observe is going to be higher frequency or lower frequency. In this case, we know as the object approaches, you'll hear a higher frequency. So what sign here will cause this to be a bigger number? Well, we want the denominator to be smaller for the numerator to be bigger. Smaller means I'm going to need a minus. So 340 divided by 330 gives me a number bigger than 1. Multiply times this gives me a larger frequency. That's what we expect. We then would expect that if the source drives away from the observer, then the observer will hear a lower frequency, which means we need a bigger number in the denominator, then this will become a plus. But in this case, it will be minus. So the frequency the observer hears in this case, will hears in this case is 500 hertz times the ratio of 340 divided by 330. And now we need a calculator. So we go 340 divided by 330 equals times 500 equals, and the observer will hear a frequency of 515 hertz rather than the 500 hertz of the source. And that's how you work with the Doppler shift. So again, just put the equation down like this. This is the velocity of, of sound. This is the velocity of sound, so that will be given. And then you write plus or minus the velocity of the observer on top, plus or minus the velocity of the source on the bottom. In our case, the observer was not moving, zero velocity, so that goes to zero. You just put in the velocity of the, of the source, regardless which direction the source is moving, and then you ask yourself the question, Will the observer hear a higher sound or a lower sound? Well, when the source is moving towards the observer, you will hear a higher frequency sound. So what do you need here to make this into a, a bigger number? A smaller denominator gives you a bigger number, so this needs to be therefore minus. If the, if the source was moving away, and you would then expect to hear a lower frequency, you need the denominator to be bigger to make that a lower frequency, so then you would need a plus there. And that's how you figure out how to do these problems.